Thank you, Maka. I appreciate that. And I just want to say, Buju, um, Waklisi, hello to everybody. I'm really excited that we're able to come together. And I just want to thank um, Maka for that, for putting this together for all of us to be able to safely gather um, as a Native community and um, to also be able to bring knowledge from um, from different parts of the United States and kind of bring that all together for us today. So I'm extremely honored and really humbled to be able to have uh, been asked to come and speak today. The first thing I would actually like to do is I would like to open up with a song. So if you um, want to just close your eyes and relax and just listen to this um, opening song, feel free to do that. Oh, Oh, in a in the in so the song that I just sang as an opening is called Hoena. Hoena comes from the Klamath and Modoc people, which I am an enrolled member of, the Klamath tribes. Hoena is a song that, um, in short, does mean welcome. So when we travel, when we sing, um, that is one of our tribal customs is to be able to welcome people with the song, just letting them know that we um, do still carry those traditions and welcoming people from different lands into our territory or when we are visiting other people, we like to um, sing the Hawena song, just letting them know um, where we come from, from the Klamath and Modoc people. So that was the song that I just sang as my welcome song, Hawena. Like Maka had said earlier, um, I'm an enrolled member of the Klamath tribes. I'm also Leech Lake Ojibwe, Warm Springs, Wasco, and Pecani Blackfoot. Um, I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon. I am a certified suicide prevention peer counselor. I am also the owner of Resting Warrior Face, which is a contemporary clothing line for Native people. That is actually um, one of our newest, newest collections that we have. And I actually titled it... Um, the Resting Warrior Face Fearless Collection. And it's just um, basically a positive outlook and perspective on um, the, how do you say it? The, I think they call it like resting bee face, which I won't say the word, or um, as Native people are, have known, been known to be stoic, which to me is a uh, negative stereotype. And I actually wanted to take that power back and switch it into a positive. So that's how I came up with resting warrior face where it's something that can be positive for native people to be able to be proud of who they are because with a lot of our native people, you know, we can be serious and still be extremely happy on the inside and we come from very strong, powerful people. So I wanted something that would be able to represent that. So that's how I came up with Resting Warrior Face. So that's just something that I wanted to share with all of you. Like I said, I come from the Klamath Tribes. That is me in the red shirt with um, my friend Robin, who is Pomo, and another friend who is from the Yurok people. They are both from California. My tribe is on borderline California, Klamath in um, Central Oregon. So just kind of giving you guys a um, an idea of the tribal regalia and like the jewelry and the tattoos, which are actually very similar to a lot of the tribes here in, in Alaska. So today 
I want to start off with um, kind of speaking about my story. I used to live in Lummi, Washington in Bellingham, and that was when I was first going to school um, for college. I went to Northwest Indian College, and that's where I studied Native Studies Leadership, a bachelor's program. And it's really known for being a very rainy state, just like Oregon, where I live now. So it's very cold. It's very raining. Um, it's surrounded by beautiful waters. And when I moved there, I was surprised because there was so much rain. And I thought I had been used to our Oregon weather where we had a lot of rain. And it was just a huge... Um, a huge culture shock for me because I was leaving the city of Portland, Oregon and moving to the res to go to school. So when I moved there, I didn't know anybody. I was living um, in the dorms on the reservation and going to school. So it was just me and my brother away from our family, away from our friends, kind of like in a new environment, but it was tribal. So during that time, um, I was just beginning my college career, kind of navigating life like from a different perspective and adjusting from city life to reservation life. And usually it's the opposite, right? Usually it's you move from the reservation or from the village to the city. And so actually I was doing the complete opposite, going from the city to the res. And there were a lot of times actually when I did feel like I feel left out I feel isolated I feel sad and there's something that's missing and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that is but there's just kind of something that um just didn't feel very good to me and it, there were times where it made me very sad and I did realize you know since I moved up here I'm not singing as much I'm not um praying as much I'm not doing my daily smudge that I usually do and so I had to kind of realize for myself that, hey, in order to be successful, to be happy, and to move forward with my college career, I'm going to have to pause everything and kind of recognize what are the things that I need in order to make myself feel better, to make myself feel stronger so that I'm able to do my job, which is get my education and then bring that knowledge back to my people. And so the first thing is acknowledging that, acknowledging that, you know, there is something missing and it is, it's basically, you know, who you are as a native person and indigenous person. And that is um, your tribal identity. That is your spiritual knowledge. That's something that we really do have to have as native people, because that is something that navigates us through life, especially with, um, the effects of colonization, um, boarding schools, loss of language, loss of culture. That is something that a lot of people are slowly getting back. And with the Klamath tribes, you know, we were just recently restored tribe again in the, um, in the late 80s. And actually my grandmother, who's a tribal historian, her name is Barbara Farmer Alatori. She was a huge reason of why our tribe was able to be restored again because of the research that she did to help our people. And so when I was going to school, um, I started singing again. I started singing those traditional songs. And actually growing up, I didn't really know any women that knew a lot of traditional songs, like drum songs, prayer songs. Um, my mother knew how to make regalia. She knew how to do beadwork. And she's really skilled at that. And so that is one thing that she did pass down to me. But the one thing that I love to do was I love to sing. So I would sing um, any kind of music that I could that was on the radio. But what I wanted to know how to do was to sing traditional music. So growing up, um, going to powwows and making friends with drummers, I um, was able to meet a mentor named Harold Paul, who was teaching me drum songs. And then from high school, I was looking up videos all the time and um, finding different links and uh, was able to teach myself these songs. And then I was learning from other people that were from my different tribes, either from my Klamath tribes. I had an older um, cousin who was also an elder named Georgine. 
who taught me some tri of our tribal dances, some of our traditional songs, and my cousin Nats, who also taught me those. And so I started singing my songs again. I started doing our dances again. Um, I started to practice um, the things that I knew that were traditional, whether that is like making regalia, doing traditional Ojibwe beadwork, learning about our floral designs, practicing those, and um, even researching the traditional foods that my Ojibwe people eat, which is manumin, which is uh, wild rice. I was making dishes with wild rice, learning more about our food. So I was doing more history, more um, research on our traditional foods, our language. I was learning the Ojibwe language while I was in college. And, you know, while I'm doing all these thing, things, I was um, practicing our songs again. I was eating these traditional foods. I was doing our dances. And I slowly started to feel so much better. I started to feel more relieved because I felt like I was coming back to who I was. And because of, you know, moving to school and feeling like my world got shook around a little bit, trying to adjust to everything that was new to me, I put my traditional um, customs on the back burner. And that was not good because I wasn't feeling like myself, my 100 self. And so that is one of the things that is most important is we have to be able to practice our traditional customs practice our knowledge, and most importantly, um, be able to practice our traditional songs. You know, a lot of our native songs hold so much wisdom and knowledge because of the words that they carry, like when I was singing the Hawena song earlier. That is a very, very traditional song from our people from, I can't even tell you how old that song is, um, but it is an ancient song that has been passed down from our people for generations and generations. And it's, you know, it's one simple word from our people, but a, a lot of it um, carries a lot of meaning. So I'm going to actually sing um, another song right now. If I could have everybody just relax, close your eyes. I'm going to sing a song called uh, Nibe, which is the Ojibwe word for water, and I'll kind of speak about that afterwards. Nihibe Gizage Igo Gimi Gwecha Wene Migo Gesha Nibe Kizage Igo Gimi Gwecha Wene Migo Gesha Yeah, 
Santo enemigo. So the song that I just sang is called Nibe. Nibe, in short, does mean water in the Ojibwe or Nishinaabe language from my people. Um, and that is a powerful, powerful song that was created by a grandmother for her grandson. And what um, our people, the Anishinaabe people, are mostly known for is the Great Lakes where our people come from. So we have all of these um, lakes in the Midwest area. And a part of our um, tradition is that we do sing for the water and we give thanks to Gichimani, Gichimanidu, which is um, in translation, the great mystery or what we would call creator. And so that was a song that I wanted to share with you because um, that is a song that I learned when I did live in Bellingham. And that made me feel that much closer to my ancestors, that much closer to my people and have a better understanding of the power of prayer, um, the power of giving thanks to our creator for the earth that we have, for the water, for the air. And so that is a beautiful song that kind of um, rooted and grounded me and was able to convey a beautiful message and remind me that we do need to be thankful for our, our Mother Earth to take care of her, to offer tobacco and send those prayers and give thanks because um, that's something that we, you know, that we can't take for granted is our Mother Earth. So that was a song that I wanted to share with all of you. So right now, we're going to move into meditation. So with meditation, um, that was also a big part for me was to be able to stop, to breathe, to listen to my surroundings and kind of take everything in. Because whether we are working all of the time, whether we are going to school full time, whether we are parents like me, I'm a mother of a, um, a five month old baby, we kind of do lose track of everything around us and we don't make time for ourselves. And a part of our spiritual health is being able to um, meditate. And the next part, the power of prayer. That is another really important thing that is actually the biggest one is um, being able to pray every day. And so with me, um, when I travel and when I speak either by myself or with my brother Diami, one of the things that we make sure to tell communities and um, tribes is that when we speak to them, we let them know that we are not here to preach to you any particular religion. That's not our place. We're not here to um, tell you to believe in this or to believe in that. But what we do is we tell our story we tell you our truth, our experiences. And um, one of the things that I practice the most is being able to pray and meditate and give thanks to Gichimanidu, which, like I said earlier, translates to the great mystery or what I say is creator. Because a creator is, you know, creator of all things, of people, of animals, of... Um, the sky, of earth, of water, of air, everything. You know, our creator created our native people. He created our beautiful mother earth for us to take care of, for us to um, live off the land, to eat the food, to give thanks, to learn how to take care of her, to take care of our mother earth. And so that is one thing that I would like to encourage is, you know, we're not telling you to, 
that you need to believe in God or that you have to go to church every day and be religious or belong to this religion, but learning to um, be able to speak to creator, whatever that means to you. Maybe you have certain songs or prayers in your language or from your tribe. And that is something that I would just encourage you to do is, you know, learn more about who your people are. Learn more about um, your tribal customs, your songs, your prayers, your dances, because I guarantee you when you start to practice those things, you are going to start feeling more like yourself. Um, you know, with the boarding school era, that was a really hard time for our people. That was um, something in our history that is really tough to deal with, and it is a very sore and sensitive subject. But, you know, it's also, um, also a huge testament to show that Native people are so resilient, and we are strong and able to bounce back from a tragedy, but turn it into something powerful and beautiful, meaning, you know, a lot of our tribes were restored, um, and those languages, those songs, and those dances, they are coming back stronger than ever, and they're starting with our young people, with our babies, our toddlers, our children, and teenagers, and now young adults. We are able to live in a time now where, yes, we can be proud of who we are, we can be proud of our dances. We can be proud of being indigenous. We can be proud of just being who we are, who creator made us to be. And that's a really, really beautiful thing. And so for me as a native indigenous woman, um, I have to give thanks every day. I give thanks to my creator that I'm able to sing our songs, that I'm able to speak what um, language I am able to speak, what, whether that is Klamath or Ojibwe. Um, which I'm still learning because that was something that our people weren't always able to do. And I think those repercussions that came with um, the boarding school area with our elders that brought a lot of sadness to them and um, even with a lot I know speaking from just my family's personal experience um, some of those effects were unfortunate like not knowing our songs, not knowing our dances, not being proud to be Native because it was um, looked down upon. But now we're able to take that back and create something powerful and positive from it and be proud of who we are as Native people. And now here we are for culture. Bringing our songs and our dances back to the people. I heard someone earlier was, um, I didn't catch her name, but she was the one introducing the dances and the songs. She was speaking about, um, what was it called? The last song, I believe it was called Paddle to Metlakatla. And actually, that was a school I got to visit over a year ago. I went to Alaska for the very first time. That was the most beautiful water I've ever had to see, like, in my life. And I was so happy to be able to see that. It was gorgeous. And breathing in that beautiful, crisp, clean air and going to the village and meeting with, like, all these awesome Native youth. It was so powerful to me. And so, you know, that's the first step is being able to um, just start practicing, you know, your tribal knowledge practicing those dances, practicing those songs, learning your language, learning what does it mean to be me. And support. Another thing that's really important is be able to find a support system. Find family that you know whether that is an auntie, a grandma, a sister, a cousin, a friend, anybody, just one person, one person that you're able to speak to. 
I know that if it wasn't for the certain people that I met that weren't even family, um, there would be songs and dances that I would have never learned. You know, there was people that I had met for the very first time teaching me, you know, a traditional song right when they met me because I had asked, you know, I had asked, like, do you know any songs from our Ojibwe people or um, do you know this word or this word? Am I saying this correctly to complete strangers, but people that were fluent in our Ojibwe culture and language? And so that's one thing I would also encourage is, you know, be able to reach out to somebody. It doesn't necessarily need to be blood relatives, but maybe somebody that you do trust. Somebody that can be a positive influence to you. Somebody that is aware of their cultural knowledge and traditions and um, can help you with that, help you to learn that. And one thing I learned is that we can learn so much from our younger generation. This is a little girl that I actually met in um, Red Lake, the Red Lake Reservation in Minnesota. That's actually where my grandfather was born. So it's a little tiny top girl, and I believe she was only four years old. Four years old, and she was representing her school. I thought that was so amazing, you know, a little tiny girl, four years old, representing her Head Start school. And it does, you know, begin with the younger generation because, um, you know, they are the teachers. They are the ones learning all of our knowledge about our songs, our dances, our traditional customs. And then they're going to be the ones, you know, growing up to be able to teach the generation after that. So I just wanted to share this photo because when I met this little girl, I just was so amazed by her, the fact that she was only four years old and was able to get on the microphone and proudly and loudly, I remember, uh, <laughs> introduced herself to um, our Anishinaabe people in our language, and I just thought that was so beautiful. And tradition. This is actually um, a good friend of mine, Enrico DeWild, and this is him with his um, son, Skylar. I wanted to share this picture because um, Rico actually knows a lot of his traditional customs. He is an expert fisher and hunter. Um, he's from Hoosley, Alaska, rural Alaska, and he is a um, Athabasca native. And I just want to share this picture because he is practicing our traditions. You know, he is a native man who takes care of his family, takes care of his children, and most importantly, he teaches them, you know, exactly who they are as Athabascan people with their language, with um, being able to hunt and to fish and to honor the land and honor the animals and give thanks to the creator for, you know, the things that they take to nourish their bodies and also to give back to Mother Earth. So that's why I wanted to share that. I just thought that was such a beautiful picture. This is a picture I also wanted to share. This is when I was um, visiting the Siletz people in Siletz, Oregon. And actually, this was a really powerful moment for me because I was visiting the Siletz people speaking at their school. And um, I was speaking about missing and murdered indigenous women. And these two little girls came up to me. And um, their mothers both told me that they show them my posts online and that the little girls always get really excited when their mom showed them different posts or videos of me singing. And these two little girls are actually both not only the Siletch tribe, but they're also Klamath tribal um, people from my tribe, so the Klamath tribe. So it was really nice to be able to meet two little girls that were also Klamath like me that looked up to me, um, you know, because they're the ones that I look up to, even though that they're younger than me. It's because they have so much life in them and they have that willingness to learn and to be able to be so young, but also already pick up our tribal customs and our traditional ways. So I just thought that was really beautiful.
And so with all of those slideshows that I did show you, um, it really comes down to you being able to think about what makes me me, what is going to make me happy as an Indigenous person, what, is, what, is, what do I need to do to be able to um, be happy and to be proud of who I am. And so it is a learning process with a lot of our people. Um, I can't speak specifically for you that is watching right now because only you know what you know, whether that is your language or your traditional dances um, or your, your tribal customs. But what I can say is for the people that maybe are lacking some traditional knowledge, maybe you live in a city, maybe you um, live really far away from your village or live far away from your people or your family. But I would say always take advantage of everything positive around you, whether that is getting up every day and feeding yourself good food, put healthy things into your body. Um, when you get up in the morning to drink that nibe, drink that water so that you can nourish your body and give thanks for that water that is cleansing you and making you stronger. Um, playing positive up uplifting music. For me, one of the best things that I learned was what makes me super happy and makes me really proud to be Native is to be able to have powerful music playing, something that can inspire me. And actually, that was a picture I showed earlier. It was of the women all with drums. They're called Yulali. And they sang these beautiful songs from their tribes. I believe some of them are like Southwest tribes. Um, but they have these beautiful songs. And I was singing those songs every day, you know, before I was going to class. And um, that made me feel really, really good to be able just to know those songs and sing them every day. And I want to share this picture of my little daughter. Her name is um, Deanna. She's only five months. She's getting ready to be six months. And I want to share this picture because um, she is only five months. And one of the things that I think about every single day is, you know, what can I teach my daughter right now? I sing her water songs. I sing her prayer songs, hand drum music. Um, Sometimes I'll say a word to her. I'll say buju, teaching her how to say hello in Ojibwe. Um, and I'll just talk to her because even though she is so small, I know that she is picking up a lot of everything around her because she's so curious. And so that's also a huge motivation for me to also keep learning about more and more of my culture and my traditions is because of my daughter because she, you know she's so small but I have to be able to um, be there for her to teach her those things that maybe I necessarily didn't grow up grow up um, knowing when I was little but did learn when I got older So I want to sing um, one more song for everyone. So again, I just want to ask you guys to close your eyes. Take a deep breath. That's a part of the meditation. Closing your eyes and taking a deep breath.
So that was also a um a Klamath song and I like to sing that more as a closing just so that you're able to um leave feeling stronger than when you came in. I like to look at our songs and our traditions and our tribal customs as our basically as your um your spiritual armor. So you have your music, you have your your dances, you have your traditional regalia. And I look at that as our spiritual armor, being able to go out into this world, whether you are going into a um, non-native environment, somewhere where you don't see people like you. Knowing those things and learning them every single day is going to give you that strength that you need from your ancestors. They are going to be with you. And so whenever you do feel sad, whenever you feel afraid or like you're alone, you have to remember, I'm learning my dances, I'm learning my songs, I'm learning my traditions, I'm learning more about who I am. Because your ancestors, that's you, that's a part of who you are. And when you look in the mirror and you see that person, you're seeing your ancestors because you come from them. And that's a really, really powerful realization is to be able to know something like that. And I guarantee you, once you start practicing those things, practicing your knowledge and everything that you'll be learning all the time, you are going to go out into this world with a different outlook and you are going to feel more um, spiritually armed which you're going to need to. So that's actually um, pretty much sums up everything that I wanted to say today. I think we're a little bit early. Um, I don't know if Maka wants to chime in right now, but I just want to say um, chi miigwech to Maka, chi miigwech to everybody that was watching right now. Thank you so much. Um, I had so much fun being able to just kind of share a little bit of what I know. And uh, hopefully, you know, passing down a little bit of encouragement and wisdom to any of you who are watching. Maybe there was something that you took from this. I like to always think of everything um, like a story. I was once told by an elder um, from Upper Skagit that, you know, there's no right and wrong answer when someone asks you, what did you learn from this story? And that's very true. He also said that when you listen to a story, whatever you take from that, that was meant for you to learn. And so I kind of want you to think about that today is, you know, when I heard Becca speak um, and the things that she was saying, what did I take from that? And that'll be exactly what you needed to know for you. 
So thank you. Nishi miigwech. Thank you so much, Baka. Um, it's it's so good to see you and good to see you um, too. Being able to hear your voice, I think you're you know the, you're the first speaker we've been able to have that's incorporated so much music um, into what you've been addressing, and I think that's something that's really really special. Um, uh, I have had been having this conversation with my my husband and his sister a little while back, where we talked about how we observe our environment and we observe the sounds and the vibrations of that particular environment. And um, with that, we talked about our indigenous languages. And when you say you sit in your environment and you listen to the birds or the wind or the way that wind is, is pushing the trees or the rain that you observe and you listen to the sounds of the environment and see how that's actually reflected in our language and in our music. And so I think you being able to share your music has been really special because it's it's um, it's the vibration of the environment itself and something that I think is really valuable. So thank you, Maka. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and let me. I'm just checking if we have any questions in the chat. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat at this time. Um, however, um, you're welcome to stay on or log into the media site um, to watch the next panel. And, okay. Um, we're going to be getting all set up here in just a second. Okay, so sounds good. Again. Thank you.